Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. I'm Midnight Mule and this is the video for Game Week 15 where we try to help you finish in the top 5% globally. Now I had this interesting comment from Curtis B7777. They suggested instead of going through the card colour guide at the start, have a card colour guide along the side when presenting the different play cards. And I thought this was a good idea, but I've not had time to implement it yet. But in the very near future, I think I'll try and do something along these lines. But in the meantime, just in case you're new to this or in case you forgot them, each player I show you when we look at next week is on a white card, except for a few that are on different coloured cards. Different coloured cards. Yep, that's right. As follows. If it's a yellow card, it means they're new to the system. Green means they're a good buy, so they're worth targeting. Grey, a bench fodder. Try to have no more than three of these. These are just so you've got a bit more money to spend elsewhere and they normally sit on your bench. Blue means sellable soon, so they're okay this week but we'll offload them soon. Orange is, they're sellable now. Red is, sell now. Probably, even if it's for a hit, it's worth moving them on. So if you're doing a free hit or transfers, you want to get rid of cards that are blue, orange, and red. You want to bring in cards that are green, and then maybe yellow, maybe white, and greys are okay too. The goalkeepers for game week 14 were just scored as follows. Pickford and Pope, they did all right. A bit of a tongue twister there almost. Pickford, Pope, picked a peck of pickled pepper and then if you had Turner who'd have been on your bench the more expensive defenders two of them did all right Trent and Trippier and the slightly cheaper defenders Colwell and LaSalle did all right it was nice to see Simicast even though letting three goals got four points because he got an assist so that was nice he's actually very good value he's definitely worth having at the moment still Simicast and then Kabore is a cheap defender if you had him he was on your bench the more expensive midfielders, San Odegaard, Saka, they did all right. Salah's ticking along. Five points. That's not many points for what he costs. But fortunately, over the salah Haaland debate, Haaland didn't score either. I think Haaland got seven. We'll find out in a minute. So there wasn't a massive difference between the two. The cheaper midfielders, Gordon's doing well still. Foden got nine. Nice to see he's back in the business. Embromo just got an assist, DRB4. And then these enabling midfielders, they didn't really do anything at all. Neto's hopefully going to be back soon. Maybe not this coming game week, but maybe at the weekend he'll be back. The more expensive forwards, some of them got some points. Alvarez got a return at last. He's not done much recently, I think. And then uh, the cheaper forwards really didn't do much at all. And then the goalkeepers. Right, this is for the coming game week, our suggestions here. Pope is almost certainly injured and out for a few weeks but at the time of recording I haven't got that confirmed but he's sellable if I had Pope I would assume he's not playing so if you've got Pope and Turner who doesn't play you don't have a goalkeeper or assume you don't have a goalkeeper you want to get at least one new goalkeeper or else you're going to be without any Edison he's also sellable because he's expensive and although Luton away are going to be okay in a couple of weeks Palace at home maybe Man City just aren't defensively great at the moment and in game week 18 he doesn't even have a game so he's worth moving on. Raya, he's a good keeper 4.6 should be first choice for Arsenal. Onana he's all right they occasionally keep clean sheets. Johnston at home to Bournemouth he's got one of the best chance of clean sheets this week. Flecker on the way to Brighton. Pickford at home to Newcastle. Newcastle do have a lot of injuries but they're possibly going to score obviously possibly but uh yeah he's kind of all right Ariola, i think he had one clean sheet this season but he's cheap and then for the cheaper keepers we've got turner who's completely sellable because he's probably not going to sell play and then dubravka i'm introducing him as a new player he's 3.9 million if pope doesn't play it's assumed it's going to be dubravka so if you've got Turner and Pope, you could sell Turner for Dubravka and then you're probably going to have a keeper all right. Or if you want to free up a bit of funds, you could do Ariello to Dubravka. I don't know for sure that he's going to play, even if Pope is injured. But if Pope is injured, he's probably the next choice and he's nice and cheap. But the thing to remember is Newcastle are good defensively. One of the reasons for that is Pope's in goal. And if Dubravka was as good as Pope, then he'd be in goal. So... I think the chance of Newcastle clean sheets is diminished without Pope. But he's all right. He's all right and he's only 3.9. Regarding defenders, Trent is still green. He's done very well recently. Away to Sheffield United next game, then Palace. 
home to Man United, that's a lot of fun. It's going to be difficult to get Trent in your team if you haven't already got him. But if you're wildcarding or you're looking to do a couple of crazy moves, you could do a lot worse than Trent. Obviously, Trippier is still very good. White is sellable. Tommy Asu has been playing instead of him since he was injured. He's no longer injured, but he's not getting 90 minutes. So for 5.7 for an Arsenal defender, that's a bit on the expensive side now. Saliba's perfectly good. James, he missed this week through suspension. And although he's away to Man United, he is an attacking defender. If he can stay on the pitch for at least 60 minutes and not get injured, I think he's actually quite a good player to have. And in three weeks' time, he's at home to Sheffield United. Porro, nice attacking defender. He's worth having. Anderson, he's sellable soon. We maybe keep him in the system for Bournemouth at home, but it may be next week we we'll just move him on. He's expensive, 5.2 what he gives. Cash hasn't been playing much recently. He plays in all the games, but just not much. And he's not doing returns. He's a He's got Man City and Arsenal the next two. Then away to Brentford. All three of those, he's probably going to concede if he even plays. Sheffield United, yes, that is a nice fixture in four weeks' time. But that is four weeks away. So he's sellable, absolutely sellable. If you want to keep him, that's fine. But if you've got other more important moves to do, it's okay to keep cash. He's probably going to be on your bench, though. But like, if you could go cash to Porro, that would be a good move. And then a slightly cheaper defenders. Gabriel, he should play most games. He's all right. Kanji, any Man City defender or any Man City player apart from Haaland's. A bit dodgy are they going to play, but he's only 4.9. He's got a couple of potential clean sheets coming up, so he's all right. Simakas only 4.8 is worth having. Udogi looks like he's back from injury. Pinnock, he's 4.6. He's a bit cheap, so that's, I guess, nice for that. Away to Brighton. Brighton have scored every game for the last thousand years. So he shouldn't keep a clean sheet this coming weekend. But then he's away to Sheffield United or hopeless. I wouldn't be bringing Pinnock in, but if I had him, I wouldn't be desperate to move him on either. Colwell, 4.5, nice and cheap. He tends to play. Maguire, 4.3. He's cheap. He's an enabler. He tends to play. Lascelles, 4.1. He's playing. So uh, any of those last three are nice and cheap and good to have. And the cheaper defenders, Kabore, 4 million. He's always going to be on your bench if you have him. Midfielder, Salah, he's still green. He's got some nice fixtures coming up. He could get a big score next week at Sheffield United. I know he didn't do anything much today. I think he got five points today. But he's still green. I'd be happy to have him, I think. Son, I've I've not made him green, although he's very close to being green. But for 9.6 million, you may rather spend your money elsewhere. If you've got him, I'd absolutely keep hold of him. But... I probably wouldn't be bringing him in if I was wildcarding now. Saka, 8.8. He's ticking along nicely like he does. Rashford's been just rubbish. Absolutely sellable. Odegaard, it's nice to see him back from injury. He looks like he should be all right now. Fernandez, even though United are woeful, Fernandez is a class above the rest of the United players. And if something happens, it could well go through him. So I would be all right. Having Fernandez, he's all right to keep, but you don't have to, but I've not marked him as sellable. If I was wildcarding, I wouldn't bring him in, but he's all right. Martinelli's all right. Bowen, nice to see that he's not injured, so he's a good buy, 7.6. But the next game is away to Tottenham, so um, there are probably other midfielders who've got more chance of getting a goal than him this coming week, but he's still perfectly good. And then he's got Fulham and Wolves, home to Man United. He could be scoring in all of those. Foden scored today, that's nice. He's an alright player. And Bremo's still got Brighton, Sheffield United, home to Aston Villa. He's uh, He's got some nice games coming up. Sterling's coming in for a nice run. Diaby, he's not getting the minutes. And he's got Manchester City, Arsenal next two games. He's fine to sell if you want to. Matoma's back from injury, that's very nice. Ward Prowse, oh, he's... I've got Ward Prowse. He's, uh, he got booked today, which wasn't nice. He is very good. I don't know if you can quite say he's world class, but he's an exceptionally good player. He does tend to get twos each week. They're all ones or threes, but occasionally he'll get a good score. I probably, well, I definitely shouldn't have brought him into my team. I wouldn't be buying him now, but I'm probably not going to sell him either, but I can't guarantee that. Gordon, he's just about green. He's away to Everton next game, which, of course, where he came from. So he's going to get an interesting reception there. I don't know if that increases the chance of him getting a yellow card 
also he is currently marked as potentially f injured. So if he's still marked as injured, I probably wouldn't be bringing him in. But by the time you get round to watching this video, making your changes, the flag may be off him. And then the cheaper midfielder is Gibbs White. All right, he chans new entry. So Wolves are now coming into a nice set of fixtures. Home to Burnley, home, home to Forest next to. He is only 5.6, so he will release money elsewhere. So if you had Fernandez and you had enough of him, or I can't think another midfielder who you've had enough of that would release some money going to uh he chan neto he should be back soon maybe for the forest game palmer's nice and cheap and nakamba's cheap depends how much money you need to be saving really regarding the forwards i've not made harlan green because rodri's not going to be playing next game week because he got the fifth yellow card today which means harlan's going to have slightly worse potentially assistance so he's he could well score well in the Aston Villa game, but the chances are slightly diminished now, and he's not playing in game week 18. But he is away to loot in next game week, so I, every week I'm thinking, shall I bring Harlan back in or not? I'm not going to bring him in, certainly for this next coming game week, now they've lost Rodri. So I've not made him green, but he's still a very good player. If you're wild carding, you should definitely make sure you've got Harlan. If you've got Harlan, you really shouldn't be selling him. Watkins, he's just ticking along still. Jesus, hopefully he's going to be all right. I say hopefully because it's exciting for the league. Darwin, he gets <laughs> he gets lots of good chances. He's just not putting them away. But away to Sheffield United, then away to Crystal Palace, then home to Man United, he's still worth having. If I was wildcarding, I wouldn't buy Darwin. I'd probably spend that money on Trent instead. But if you've got Darwin, you don't need to get rid of him. I have looked at swapping Darwin and maybe White for Trent and maybe Archer for myself but that would cost me four points because I've only got one free transfer so I'm probably not going to do it but I'll, I'll think about it Alvarez he's all right but missing game week 18 Hoyland Man United is still woeful he's still completely sellable Solanke he's still getting points and he's still cheap 6.5 I think he got six points today that he's all right and then cheaper forwards, Vissa has got some nice games coming up. Enketia, he's not going to get many game minutes. He's absolutely sellable. Pedro's nice and cheap. And I think he's scored maybe the last two or three game weeks in a row now. But he never gets 90 minutes. Morris does get 90 minutes, but rarely scores. But he's cheap. That's why he's in here. Adibayo is also cheap, as is Archer. Archer's the cheapest of the lot. So you would have one of the last three on the list here just to release funds for elsewhere. Pedro... It's sometimes worth playing, but he's always a gamble. But he's got two home games coming up. Is he going to play? You just don't know. Or he's, I certainly don't know with Brighton who's going to get played. Now, the goalkeeper bench order. I'm going to suggest a bench order. You do whatever you like, though. <laughs> this is just what I would do. The first keeper I show you that you see, I suggest is the one on your bench. So if you've got Turner, I suggest he's on your bench. If you've got Flecken, away to Brighton. Brighton always score. So he's not going to get a clean sheet. He's on your bench. Ariola away to Tottenham. He's going to let in lots of goals probably. Pickford at home to Newcastle. That's going to be an interesting game. Chance of clean sheet. He'll certainly get a chance of making lots of saves. But I think there's a reasonable chance there won't be any clean sheets this coming game week. So the goalkeeper order doesn't, I think, make an awful lot of difference. Edison away to Villa. Almost certainly concede there. Onana away to Chelsea. He's probably going to concede. Johnson Palace at home to Bournemouth, possibly a clean sheet, but Bournemouth are doing all right at the moment. And then where I've got Dubravka, this is Dubravka or Pope. It's if you have a Newcastle keeper, he's worth playing unless you have Raya. I think Raya, who I can't fit on the screen, the Arsenal keeper, he's your best shot at clean sheet. But if you haven't got Raya, then you want to play Dubravka or Pope. If you haven't got one of those, then you play Johnson, etc. etc. Regarding the other players, if I'm not showing a player, it's because you're playing them. So of the rest, the ones you may be debating that are in the system, the first player you see, if you've got them, like Eddie Bayo, he's position three on your bench. The next one you see you've got, I'm suggesting position two. The last one, position one. These are just suggestions, but I do put a lot of thought in this and there's a lot goes behind this. And I suspect there's quite a few content creators you'll see will disagree with this order, and that's fine. So then it'd be Kebore. I found my glasses. I need my glasses. I'm getting old. Older. 
uh, Nakamba, Archer, Morris, Pinnock, Cash, Maguire, Hoyland, Enketia, Lascelles, Ward Prowse, Akanji, Vissa, Udogi, Gibbs White, Diaby, Jao Pedro, Rashford, Anderson, Colwell, Solanke, White, Simicas, Porro, Palmer, James, Gordon, He Chan, Bowen, Mitoma, Gabriel, Sterling, Alvarez, Foden, Martinelli. And if they're not on this list, it's because you're playing them. And I very much doubt you've got 10 outfield players without there being three on this list. You may have, but it's unlikely. Regarding the captain and vice captain, got quite a nice choice this week. We got Salah, Harland, and Son. They all have nice games with the potential to score. So, oh, I would. Who would I go for? I would probably go for Salah if I had all three of those. Harland, yeah, I would probably go for Salah. Would be my first choice. But you go for whoever you like. I don't know who the most captain is going to be, but they're all perfectly good captaincy choices. Saka is also good. As is Trent. As is Fernandez is a bit of a outside pun. It's because I wanted to put six up. And they're probably the six that I would go for. Of those, Salah and Haaland, I think, are probably the safest choices. If you can make one of these captain, one of these vice captains, that's what I'd suggest. Don't do two from the same team just in case a game gets postponed. So I would suggest Salah's not your captain with Trent, your vice captain. If you don't have two of these, then I'd suggest put your vice captain or captaincy on one of the green players we saw earlier. And if you're, in case you're wondering about the picture, that is a little kitten that's overwhelmed with the amount of football that's going on. So we've got football this weekend, then midweek, and then at the other next weekend. And I've got a lot of things I need to be sorting out. So it's all a bit much. <laughs> but it's fun. <laughs> there we have it. I hope that made sense. Regarding how the teams are doing, the ones I looked at, some got little green arrows, some got little red arrows. So there wasn't much of a movement this week. Uh, but we've got an awful lot of games coming up in December, which is, of course, where we are now. So now's the chance where hopefully we're going to start gradually, gradually moving up if we get to play things right. I'm going to try and get rid of some of the players out of this system because there are too many and I need to narrow it down. So expect the next few weeks to have several selling players. All right. Thank you very much for watching and all the best for game week 15. Bye.